Hello everyone and welcome. 702 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, quarter mile in 12.9 seconds, and a top speed of 118 miles per hour. Now that last number reminds us we're not talking about a sports car. This is a full-size pickup truck. The Ram 1500 TRX is for the hyper-niche truck buyer who instead of having concerns for silly things like payload or tow ratings, you know, truck things, is more concerned about quarter-mile trap speeds. In this case, 108 miles per hour. According to Ram, it's the quickest, fastest, and most powerful mass-produced truck in the world. So in this video, we're going to check out the clever engineering that has gone into it, how it may dominate the Ford Raptor, and perhaps throw in a few bad jokes to keep our spirits high. If you're wondering if Dodge, Ram, and the likes of Chrysler have run out of ideas, well, the answer is no, because they still haven't fit the Hellcat engine into their entire lineup. To recap, we have a Hellcat Challenger, Charger, Grand Cherokee, and Durango. I know we're all patiently awaiting news of the Pacifica, but in the meantime, the good news is the mission of Hellcatting all the things draws closer to success with the launch of the Ram TRX. T-R-X. Say it fast. T-R-X. You get the idea. They're going for T-Rex here, a dominating dinosaur that made raptors look silly by comparison. I'll be referring to the truck as the T-Rex for the remainder of the video. So regarding the engine, under the hood is yes, the beautiful 6.2 liter supercharged V8 you've come to love from the Hellcat lineup. It whines, it roars, it produces 702 horsepower and 650 pound foot of torque in the T-Rex. And the engine is ready to be pushed with a cast iron block, forged steel crankshaft, powder forged connecting rods, and forged alloy pistons. Some changes versus the other Hellcats include a deep sump oil pan to keep the pickup tube in the oil under high G cornering, and the alternator has been moved higher to allow for 32 inches of water fording, something you probably shouldn't try in the Challenger Hellcat. The air entering the engine comes from two locations. Half of it is fed through the functional hood scoop, and the other half from a ram air intake at the front of the grill. Did you catch that? Ram air. Ram? Yeah? You heard it the first time? Oh, great. Okay, well, if you have a big pickup truck with a big engine making big power out in a desert environment, well, you're going to need some serious filtering. That's why the Ram T-Rex has not just one, but two air filters, each measuring about 8 by 12 inches. Now, everyone knows the true benchmark, the pinnacle of off-road Baja performance, is the 2016 Subaru Crosstrek found in my garage. And yet the Subaru Crosstrek only has a single air filter, embarrassing, with about a 7 inch by 7 inch area. Only 49 square inches, whatever that unit means. In the Ram T-Rex's press release, they specifically state it has, quote, heavy duty air filters that provide 198.4 square inches of filter surface area, four times the dust trapping capacity when compared to the closest competitor. Okay, let's do some quick math. 4 times the closest competitor, so 198.4 divided by 4, which just so happens to nearly perfectly match the Crosstrek's filtration area. As I suspected, Subaru Crosstrek is the closest competitor confirmed. Folks, it's just math. The airbox is mounted up top, helping allow for that high water fording depth in addition to providing easy access for the owner to clean out the filter elements. Ram states based on industry standard tests, the T-Rex can ingest dirty air and debris longer than any competitor before performance begins to diminish. Here's a bonkers fact about how much heat this engine has to reject from the intake charge. At wide open throttle, the intercooler is rejecting 40 kilowatts of heat, all of this heat just from the intake air alone. To give you perspective, this is a home space heater. At peak power, it dumps 1.5 kilowatts of heat into your room. Now imagine if you had 26 of these space heaters in your room. That's how much heat the intercooler is rejecting, pulling this energy out of the intake charge to cool it down while at wide open throttle. Now let's move on to cooling because if you have a big heavy truck with a massive engine making 700 horsepower, well combustion engines aren't really all that efficient, so substantial cooling is required. In a typical gasoline combustion engine, about a third of the fuel's energy goes out the exhaust, about a third of the energy is lost as heat in the cooling system, and then you have about a third left over, which in this case is about 700 horsepower, our useful power, which is left over and then has to make its way through your drivetrain to power the wheels. So you need a beefy cooling system here. For comparison, the Shelby GT500 with its 760 horsepower 5.2 liter V8 has a cooling system capable of 230 kilowatts of heat rejection or about 300 horsepower. 
That doesn't mean the engine can't make more than 230 kilowatts of waste heat, but even track driving where you're often at wide open throttle, there are plenty of times where you're braking or going through corners where the cooling system catches back up. Okay, all of this is to say the jumbo ram dinosaur needs a jumbo radiator with an abundance of airflow to keep things cool. Or, you know, just keep fording through 32 inches of water. Now, here's where we find ourselves in a bit of a pickle. The engineer wants there to be plenty of airflow through the front of the truck. The marketing team knows that the real appeal of a truck is ensuring that everyone around you knows what brand of truck you bought by sticking as large as possible letters spelling it out for you. R. A. M. Ram. Great spelling, Jerry. It needs to be big. Bigger. Even bigger. Come on, this is a T-Rex, not a Raptor. So they make the letters really big, but then, uh-oh, the big letters block all of the airflow. So what do you do? Simple. Cut some holes in those letters so that air can still flow through, and folks can still know you spent tremendous coin on a super fast truck, but it won't overheat in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the highway while F-150 drivers timidly look in their rearview mirrors. As far as the four-wheel drive system, there's an active transfer case which has a low range with 2.64 to 1 gearing, and the transfer case will vary the torque split depending on which mode you're in. Auto, Sport, Snow, Tow, Mud, and Baja. Torque is sent to the front and rear differentials, and in the rear is an electronic locking diff paired with a Dana 60 solid rear axle with full floating shafts. From the differentials, we move out to the wheels, which you can option beadlock wheels from the factory. Instead of relying on the air pressure to keep the tire in place, this uses screws to clamp the tire in place. In off-roading scenarios, it is often beneficial to decrease tire pressures, but if you go too low on tire pressure, you can risk the tire bead slipping, or worse, coming off the wheel. The beadlock ensures the tire stays mounted and doesn't slip relative to the wheel's position. In this case, there's a 35-inch tire at each corner, T-Rex exclusive Goodyear Wrangler Territory All Terrains, and 325 over 65 R18. Of course, another massive piece of off-roading comes down to the suspension. The T-Rex has over 13 inches of wheel travel in both the front and the rear. Up front is an independent, active suspension with forged aluminum upper and lower control arms designed to maintain the appropriate camber angles during their long travel. There are massive 2.5 inch wide Bilstein adaptive dampers in both the front and the rear, which use a single piece aluminum construction with machined cooling fins for heat dissipation. In the rear is a 5 link coil suspension that allows for the solid axle to travel up to 13 inches. But look, I know why you're really watching this video, and I know what excessively fast truck customers are actually interested in. Fuel economy. That's why Ram says, quote, the use of lightweight, high strength aluminum closures, including the doors, hood, and tailgate, help reduce weight and boost fuel economy. This truck is massive, eight inches wider than the Rebel, with fatter tires, and it sits significantly taller. The standard Ram 1500 4x4 with a V8 is getting 15 mile per gallon city, 22 mile per gallon highway. So what is the 700 horsepower truck getting? Oh, conveniently there are not any current estimates released. To Ram's credit, they do provide that it has a drag coefficient of 0.489. Now for context, I wanted to know if 0.489 was good for Tyrannosaurus Rex. And after reviewing a study published in Innovative Biosystems and Bioengineering, which analyzed the T-Rex's running efficiency, they found, quote, the air drag in T-Rex running can be neglected. This is excellent news for Ram. With negligible air resistance, we'll all patiently await the release of impressive fuel economy specifications. Speaking of specifications, pairing the T-Rex side by side with the Ford Raptor, it's pretty obvious what they were benchmarking. Many of the stats line up near perfectly, with the T-Rex having several very slight advantages. The most notable difference, really, is the power. 252 more horsepower and 140 more pound-feet of torque versus the Raptor. From a specification standpoint, looking at the numbers doesn't really reveal that the T-Rex would dominate the Raptor in any off-roading scenario that aren't about outright speed. The Raptor is also likely to weigh less than the T-Rex. We don't know what the T-Rex's weight is yet, but the Hellcat Durango weighs about the same as the Ford Raptor, so I imagine the T-Rex will be more. But here's the most worrying news for the T-Rex. It's currently pitting itself against a Ford Raptor which was released in 2017, and its single largest advantage over the current generation Raptor is horsepower. But according to Car and Driver, multiple sources within Ford told them there will be a special version of the Raptor fit with a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 found in the Shelby GT500. In the Shelby, it's making 760 horsepower. So while the T-Rex will likely dominate the current spec Raptor, it sounds like there may be an asteroid hurling towards it to end its reign.
Now, is there any legitimate reason to own a 700 horsepower Baja thrashing pickup truck? Well, I can't say no, as I'd be hypocritically overlooking my emotional impulse buy of the 2016 Subaru Crosstrek, which again has over 147 horsepower. Words like quickest, fastest, and most powerful are words I live by on a daily basis. That's why I've renamed my ride after the largest carnivore to ever exist on this planet. The biggest, the baddest, the kind of speed only a Crosstrek can match. The Blue Whale. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.